Hey everybody, it's Tori Townley. Welcome to the Serve Brew. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm so excited. Today we have an incredible guest and someone who has become a really great friend to me, just someone who inspires me and um, challenges me to like seek after people and seek after God's heart and really like zone in on what is he doing and how can we partner with his heart. She's amazing, got the most beautiful energy and soul ever. Welcome to the podcast, Stephanie McCoy. How are you? Thank you so much, Tori. I'm great. Thank, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I'm so pumped. This podcast has been like what I listen to all the time to get all things outreach. So I, I'm so glad to, to just be here with you. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. You are amazing. I was telling uh, Stephanie before you guys, like I knew the second I met her, I was like, she's going to be on the she's gonna be on the podcast. She's going to be like a girl who is a leader in all this. So I, it's like just a dream come true to have you on. Thank, <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you, you are at Summit Church in PA. How's mm-hmm. that? How's the North? It's great. It's actually pretty warm right now. Very warm, but it's about to, yeah, it's about to get cold, but no, it's wonderful. I'm in Indiana, Pennsylvania, which sounds weird because it's two different state names. So oftentimes, you know, no one knows where we are, but we're in Indiana, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know that. because I <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. So I want to jump into like all the serve stuff, but you know, Tradition has it. What's uh-huh. your favorite Starbucks order? Yeah. So I laugh at myself because I don't even always know what I'm ordering when I order it because I'm just adventurous and will do whatever. But my go-to is a blonde roast Americano mm-hmm. with a cream and a stevia. Oh, I did <laughs> not when, do this. Yeah, you can. But with the holidays coming up, I'm pumped for a chestnut praline latte. Are you a fan? I never had one of those. Oh, goodness. Never. I just need to send you a Starbucks gift card. Yeah. (laughs) Educated. I'm a little bit too simple. I'm basic over here. All milk latte. That's it. Wow. Okay. But the blonde roast Americano, I think, is about to rock my world because that is my favorite. The blonde roast is just perfect. I support it. There's more caffeine in a blonde roast. It's crazy. Really? I didn't even know that. I know. (laughs) No wonder I'm so tired. You've been ordering the wrong thing. <laughs> so funny. I love it. Good stuff. We are getting educated on coffee as well as coverage today, guys. That's fantastic. Okay, Stephanie, tell us just a few fun facts about you, a little brief snapshot of your story, who you are. Yeah. Be here. Yeah. So fun facts. I am an Enneagram seven, um, through and through. I love an adventure. I love to travel. Um, been attempting to learn Spanish slowly for three years, mostly due to missions and traveling and all of that, but that's been really fun. Um, Yeah, as far as my story goes, I I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania, not Indiana, Pennsylvania, but nearby, and uh, I attended church regularly with my family, but for most of the life, I would say I claim to be a Christian, but I really worship sports. Um, And so the summer before high school, I actually ended up going to a youth event where I remember the pastor speaking and asking them to surrender, asking us to surrender our lives. And, and I did, I went up to the altar, gave my life to Christ and just knew like I had done it before, but it was more so the get out of hell card. Um, but I knew this time was like an authentic relationship with Christ, um, and all he had set me free from. And so, yeah, so that's, that part of my story, but really there were two things after that, that really, um, just sparked my faith. And because of that kind of (laughs) worshiping sports, I ended up breaking my leg when I was in, uh, 11th grade, which would be, you know, when all the recruits are looking for their, uh, you know, the coaches are looking for their recruits and all of that. And it, and it literally made me be still, you know, I could not move, but it was good because it was this stripping of, of, you know, what I felt like still needed to be stripped from me. Um, and so God used that time to just work in my heart and be still. And at the same time, I had a friend who had passed of cancer, like during that same time. And so these things rocked my world, but in a way that, uh, thank God, it, it led me closer to Christ. It led me, you know, deeper in him. And so I knew from that moment, from those moments, it was like, okay, 
this life is so much more than a sports, but so many other things. And I want to honor Christ in every part of my walk. So, so yeah. Wow. I did not know all of this. That is some deep stuff. Oh yeah. my gosh. Wow. Yeah, so good. Like, dealing with all of that, having like the solidification of your faith, mm-hmm. where did that, how did that lead you to where you are now? Like you're leading outreach in your community. What, what were the steps to get here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will condense a four-year story into a much shorter amount of time. So after uh, breaking my leg, I, I felt like even though I was growing closer towards Christ, I felt this pull towards a university that was semi near my hometown, which is called Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Um, and so I, I just felt like this was a place that I was supposed to be at. I was recruited for softball to be here. Um, and it's funny because this university is actually known to be a party school, a crazy school, a public school. And so I didn't totally understand why, but I knew after having those big spiritual moments, like I want to honor God in the way that I live in the way that I walk on this campus. And so because of breaking my leg, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be a physical therapist. I'm on the road to be a physical therapist, studying exercise science. And while I was here, uh, I thank God I got involved in campus ministry life. So FCA fellowship of Christian athletes got super involved with them. And I went on a trip when I was a sophomore at IUP at Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And I went on a missions trip to the Dominican Republic. And I just knew after seeing what I saw, after experiencing that, I was like, I am changed forever. I cannot unsee what I have seen. You know, I, this has impacted me so deeply. I want to give my life to it, but what do I do now? Because I am, you know, moving in this completely different direction. And so I tried to kind of play God, like, how can I mingle these two worlds together? Can I do medical missions and all of that? Um, but yeah, I just trusted God. and was like, God, I'm, I'm going to move forward with what I feel like I'm supposed to do, but I know missions is a part of my heart. Um, and so it wasn't then until my senior year, which would have been around 2015, that uh, I really started to become like unsettled in this, something is off, but now I'm at my senior year, you know, what am I going to do? And so just being a full-time student, being an athlete, like trying to study for GREs, like looking for graduate schools, which was the next step. I just was like, God, I have no clue what's next. Um, And I'm really asking him, like, what are your plans? And so I graduated uh, in 2015, like I just finished my degree exercise science and was like, all right, I guess I don't know what the Lord has spoken. I'm, I haven't really taken time to listen fully, um, because I'm scared, but I'm just going to move on with grad school. And so there was this, there was this transition period after graduating between May and June, where I was at my parents' house for a month. Um, and I remember just really seeking God and being like, okay, God, I want to do whatever you want to do, whatever you want me to go, like, that's where I want to go, and I had finished reading this book that I was reading with my mentor, um, also my my pastor, called Jesus Hearted Woman by Jody Dietrich, and there were two questions in this book that totally changed it for me, and I wrote them down for you, so one is, if you could do anything you wanted, no limitations to make this world a better place for people and more in line with God's will, what would you do? Don't just think about what you should do. Think about what you would want to do if you were equipped to do it. And then the second question, when you consider all the injustice, brokenness, pain, and evil associated with humanity, what are the top three things that break your heart? If you could change any of those, what would be your priority? And I was just like, not physical therapy (laughs) like that that was my response and so anyway the Lord just graciously spoke to my heart and he just said trust me and I knew like okay I'm gonna do missions I have no idea what it looks like but I'm gonna do missions and so long story short removed myself from graduate school um a few weeks later my pastor said would you ever want to lead trips for a church Turns out I was interviewing for a whole year of being in relationship with them and knowing them when I didn't know it. And uh, I said, yeah, where? I thought he meant somewhere else. And he meant at Summit, which was the church that I had been attending during college, if that makes sense. So, so that's the whole journey. And so I got, you know, the global and local missions aspect, which I absolutely love, but that is, that's how I ended up here. Oh my God. What a crazy story. Yes. 
so cool. It's so cool <laughs> how surrendered and how much just you just surrendered like your whole everything just to follow God's heart for you. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. Those questions are poof. Yeah. A lot of the should factor that yeah. I think especially women feel. I feel it personally of just like, gosh, and you just know there's so many options. What yeah. should I do? But he d- the desires are the things that he planted in you from his own character. So right. sometimes want is an okay thing. And it's so beautiful when your heart is is partnered with him like that and look at you. Like you yeah. have refreshed. <laughs> and it's such a I know that summit, you are a gift to summit, you're a gift to revolution. Like I'm so glad that you took that leap of faith. So thank you. We honor you for that. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, it, when, whenever it asked, like, if you were equipped to do it, that was the moment where I was like, okay, God's going to equip for whatever he asks us to do, you know, and I think that was the turning point. So thank Absolutely. God for that. Wow. So cool. He's faithful, man. I love mm-hmm. it. <laughs> okay. So now we kind of know the context, how you got to be here. Let's zone in on Indiana, Pennsylvania. Yeah. What is that? You mentioned the school there. I know that's mm-hmm. a big part of the culture. And yeah. just talk about like the church and yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, we'll paint the picture, bring us there. Yeah. yeah. So Indiana um, is a small town. It's a rural mentality, Western Pennsylvania, definitely like blue collar working class. We're an hour and 30 minutes from, from Pittsburgh, which is the bigger city nearby. Uh, if you visit, a lot of people call it a harm, Hallmark town. So if that gives you any idea, we're a cute little Hallmark town. Um, no, yeah, but so... <laughs> Exactly. So with, uh, there's about 14,000, but with the students, it almost doubles probably or adds probably 10,000 to the population. But man, just like, I love what the university does bring to the town because it feels like that it's a, it's a place that's more open to change. That's a little bit more diverse. Um, there's a great international program with the university. So there are students from over 50 countries that come to the middle of nowhere, you know, to, to pursue an education. I mean, like I've met people and have friends from Uganda and Kenya and Mali. And I'm just like, how did you, how did you end up here? Um, but yeah, the university just brings a lot of life. And so with that being said, with, with our church, like, I mean, specific to the, the international students, we are, we are always talking about how, like, man, God is bringing these international students from the different cultures of different faiths, literally to our backyard. And like, we just get to host them and love them and serve them. And who knows if they do come to know Christ, they can be sent out, you know, as missionaries back to their own countries, back to their own places. Um, But above all, like, we just want to see our church vision statement is every life made different, which comes from in Christ, we are a new creation, right? And so we just want to see people completely made new, made different. Um, but some of our core values are healthy relationships. We say big faith, radical generosity, and creative evangelism. And I love like our tagline for creative evangelism. It says to reach people no one is reaching. We have to do things that no one is doing. Um, and so we do weird things, we do crazy things, but we do things in, in partnership too, you know, to serve the community. So yeah, we just want to see people like discover who they were designed to be, even in our volunteer process. We want to see them discover how God has designed them, what he's calling them to, and then send them out, you know, with the support, with the community of a local church. So, yeah. Wow. That is, it sounds so exciting. Like just it is exciting. creative freedom. And like, that's even a challenge for you of like, I got to do stuff that no one's ever done before. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a challenge that I know you've taken on <laughs> and killed it. And I do want to, like, there's so much you said, I want, I will go back to, I want to ask a lot of different questions, but I want to know you came into this role and clearly like y'all have such a beautiful vision, but I remember like conversations with you at the beginning and it was like, I got to figure out my strategy. I got to figure out like, what are we going to do? What are we going to focus on? And can you just talk about like what your mind was processing at that point and kind of how you figured out your groove and you found your sweet spot leading Mm -hmm. a particular community yeah. yeah so, no, that's great. So when, when I started this job, as you heard from my story, I mean, I was like 22. I had no clue what I was doing. Like I've never served at a church before. I didn't have a formal education. And so I was just constantly like 
people, God help me, people send help me, you know, just trying to, to learn from others. But really, um, it was this beautiful process of number one, like God sending the right people, but number two, just deciding to do something. Um, and so we would, we, we plan specific events, like as a church, we would do specific events, outreach events as a church, such as like a prom for individuals with special needs, massive egg hunts, teacher appreciation, things like that. Um, but when I had reached out to you, which would have been, I don't know, I guess a year ago now, which would be like five, six years later, I was just in this place that pretty much the COVID pandemic kind of wrecked me and my approach to outreach, but also God had already been stirring some stuff in me that I was just feeling like really unsettled in, um, in how I was stewarding his people. Um, so I mentioned like our process for volunteering at the church, people would go through this process and talk to me at the end of it and say, you know, Steph, I want to do this with outreach and I want to do this, but I always felt like, why does it still depend on me? Like if they want to do something, it's financially, they need the church somehow, or promotionally, they need the church or they need me, right, to put it on the website and things like that. And so I was just in this frustrated place where I'm like, I know God says equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. I know he's going to provide a way, but currently I don't know how to do that, you know? And so reaching out to you was literally like a snowball effect in the best way because it was just like, um, you know, when COVID happened, as, as far as the lockdowns, all of my lovely events, and I say that kind of sarcastically, but in a good way, all of these events that we want to do, you know, we're not going to work in this season anymore. And, and people were in our church, were, were knowing of neighbors or knowing of people in their lives who needed served, who needed help. But it was like, how do we tell them and how do we support them and how do we, you know, mobilize them? And so reaching out to you, I just felt like there's so much value in serving with a community, like with a, a group of people that you can get to know in relationship. And I was just like, what if, what if it was a group based approach? Like, what if we said, do it with a community, do it with a group. And so we really started exploring like Church of the Highlands, uh, small group, outreach, small groups and, um, and all of those things. And so we just kind of made it our own in some ways. But yeah, we were just trying to figure out like, how can we do it in a way that is empowering and sustainable and just thriving for the people that want to continue with the passions that they, that they have and the needs that God has given them. Wow. That's such a cool process. And it's a big pivot. Like that, yeah. that's a big shift to have to like navigate and figure out, but you've done it so beautifully. And just even like, I've watched you personally meeting with people. Like we've talked about that year. It's, yeah you're personally invested. Mm. And I think that that culture really permeates and it spreads. It's not, I think sometimes the bigger our church grows, the more we feel like there is like this big scale, heavy organizational yeah. thing that removes us from the accessibility. But I think you've kind of rewritten some of that for yourself and you're like no I'm, I'm going to be accessible and that's the culture that's how we set that tone and that's how it spreads so yeah, yeah. When, whenever that happened I was also reading this book called the art of neighboring at the exact same time and it was um it was cool because it was it was a turning point where we were thinking like what what if Jesus, what if we took Jesus' words literally, like to love our actual neighbors, to love the people that are next door? Like, what if God purposely placed us in our neighborhoods? And so in the midst of like not knowing what restrictions are going to look like last Easter, um, we said, well, what if we like, what if we had our church members lead egg hunts in their, in their neighborhoods and in their communities? And it was just this really cool turning point because it it was like, all right, no, we're going to equip the people in our church to say, I'm going to reach my neighbors, right? And I'm going to come up with the ways to, to do that. And then that's, it was partially because of not knowing what, what big gatherings we could have, but also what things were going to look like. And so then there was this shift towards, um, with serve day, serve day beforehand was, was Steph and some other leaders like figuring out 
what opportunities are there to serve? Okay, let's fill them with people. But then we just said, wait a second, what if we ask the people in our church, what opportunities to serve do you see? Um, you know, what needs do you see and how can we run with them and, and recruit people? So. And how have you seen that change the culture of the church? Like the passion I'm sure is erupting. How's that? It, yeah, it is. It is erupting. It feels like it's exploding in the very best way. Like it is the most a uh, rewarding thing for me to see is people saying like, oh, we could, we could give homemade meals to some college students, to sororities because like, because of their story, because I was in a sorority once and I didn't have anyone in the community loving me, you know, or just so many things like, oh, we could, we could pick up trash after the homecoming parade. Like, why can't we do that? And I'm like, I would have never thought of these ideas, but it, it has sparked something in our in our church and in our people that it's it's like we're continuing this is pretty new right so we just launched all of this in like the summer as far as this approach with serve day and all of those things um so we're constantly having communications with people being like you know if god is speaking to you if he's working in you there's there's a way like we can do this whether it's a small group whether it's a one-time thing on the serve app like we can do it and when people come to me with their new ideas, I just lose my mind. I get so excited. Oh, it's so cool to have a yes culture. I think people yeah. aren't always used to that, to be ex like, I can go to Stephanie and tell her my idea and she's going to say yes. Like yeah. that encourages people to continue to dream. Like I have permission to dream mm -hmm. and permission to be creative. And truly these ideas that people come up with to me, if they're birthed from like a personal place like that, right. those are the things that resonate most with people in the community. Right. Yes, big scale events are great for like a first gig, like like, let's get started. Let's start some momentum. Yeah. But the stuff that carries the most weight are the things that are birthed out of those hearts. And so you're activating their calling and their passion and who they are and just their identity in Christ. Like you're helping yeah. really activate that for people. So that is powerful in the most exponential ways. And I love watching it happen. It's so cool. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> I did want to circle back to, you've talked a lot about being college town and how that affects the culture mm -hmm. um and I think that's just such a unique thing that a lot of our listeners probably most of most I'm not saying most of us I don't know but having a university nearby people may not realize like some of the dynamics that that can bring to the table some of the assets and some of the opportunities so yeah. how are you guys both reaching students and all using not using them but empowering them and harnessing their energy and dreams talk, yeah. talk about some of that yeah. So as I mentioned, like it is a party school. It's definitely not like this, you know, conservative private little place. Um, and so we want them no matter where they came from, whether it's internationally or just nationally, like we want them to know God, like we want them to see God in the way that we serve. But like some of the things that we've been, we've been doing, or we've been seeing is the one, one I've mentioned, like, let's uh, let's do homemade meals for these girls that are in sororities that are here alone, that are struggling, all of this stuff. And there was this, it was a young mom in our church who said like, I wanted to do this. Um, and so what's cool is like, we just throw it on the serve app. Hey, if you want to cook, like you're signing up to cook. And um, we have seen girls like come to church, which is really awesome, but also like come to our leadership nights where we teach leadership teachings and they want to grow in their leadership. Um, but the coolest story from that is we, um, we saw a, a girl who we had served a meal to um, the whole sorority, but recently her mom had passed away tragically. And so their first response was to say, let's get someone from that church, from those people who served us a meal, like let's get someone to come pray for her. And it was the other girls that wanted to pray together for the one who lost her mom, like the one girl who lost her mom wasn't even going to be there. Um, and they just wanted to rally and pray for her. And she ended up being there and they got to minister with her too, but it was like, this never would have happened if we wouldn't have just been able to say yes. And like, let's be obedient and let's serve. Um, and so it's just cool because that 
the one leading that outreach is just like, Steph, I was in a sorority and we never talked about praying. We never talked about, you know, church and all of those things. And so we, we do that often. That feels like it could turn into a very consistent opportunity, but we partner with uh, Life Choices, which is a, um, a ministry for crisis pregnancies. It's a ministry for treatment and things like that. We partner with them. We've had small groups for international students who do come uh, to help them just get acclimated to Indiana, to get acclimated to America, to build relationship. Um, we've helped move students in on move-in day. Um, yeah, partnering. We partner with other churches um, in the community to create one church-based campus ministry. It's called United, which is really cool. Um, and so anyway, those are, those are ways that we've just been serving and seeing God move, but empowering students. It's fun because any of the outreaches that we have, the students can jump in with them. And it's so fun to see a young college student serve, you know, with an older individual and like find like almost a mother, you know, here in Indiana, Pennsylvania with that. But through all of these campus ministries, through all of these things like United and conferences that we have on campus, like we are seeking to empower. I definitely feel like it's an area we can continue to grow in. Um, but yeah, those are some of the things that we're just diving into. I love it so much. Okay, forgive me if this is wrong, but did you guys do for like holidays? Did y'all do something like adopt a student or something? Maybe that was somebody else. Sorry. We, <laughs> we uh, no, we did. You're remembering correctly. <laughs> we adopted a whole family uh, that had come here though. So it wasn't just one student. It was a family that had come here internationally, uh, actually a couple of them. And so the church community would give money and then some people would go shop and some people would, yeah, some people would babysit the kids while the parents went and shopped or they wrapped gifts and things like that. Yeah. I knew I, knew I wasn't making that up, was yeah. like, which is a, such a cool idea. I was going to ask too, like, um, well, let me segue into the next question because this is perfect. I was going to ask, what are some of your favorites like specific serves you've given us a lot but just like spitfire some of your favorite creative yeah. items, including holidays all right all right and yeah holidays. so <laughs> so a cool one during covid uh actually which i didn't think was going to work was we said okay what if we what if we created this account where people could give money people could give ten dollars and well, they could give any amount, but for every $10 given, we would purchase a $10 gift card from a local business. So we called it double the impact. We purchased gift cards from local businesses and then gave those gift cards to people that were consistently serving during the pandemic, but were often overlooked. So we would go to waste management. We would go to the one, the ones doing laundry at hospitals, we would go to grocery store workers, bus drivers, and just write them a handwritten card with the gift card and just say, thank you for serving our community. And I thought that was something that we would get maybe $500 for. We got 13,000. <laughs> so during a time where businesses are struggling, right? We got to be like, we invested $13,000 into local businesses, you know, during a hard time for them. So that's definitely a top one. Um, we recently did notes for nurses, which is just uh, writing encouraging notes for nurses um, because it seems like they could be feeling that, well, number one, they're heroes, right? But it seems like they could be feeling like, I did not sign up for this. I did not sign up for, uh, like our hospital is just packed right now. Like I didn't, this is not what I felt like I was signing up for. And so we just encouraged them like, yeah, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for doing the hard things and uh, just writing them handwritten notes. We did on serve day, we did a baby shower um, for an international student uh, from Uganda. She was actually here on, on her own without her husband. And she also had a four-year-old autistic son was going through cancer and had a baby on the way. And it was just like this great opportunity, which I would have never thought of. Someone in the church had a relationship with them, right? And just said, hey, this woman deserves a baby shower. And she also has nothing because she came here from Uganda, you know, and, and hasn't had anything yet in America. And so we got to throw her a baby shower and love her well. Um, there was this one awesome project where we just did this complete makeover of a mini golf course in our town. And so it was this mini golf course that was just kind of like 
starting to fall apart in some ways. And so we got to just go to this, you know, local business owner and say, hey, is there anything we could do to serve? Um, and he starts naming things. And we basically brought a, <laughs> it was like extreme makeover mini golf edition um, and just completely remodeled this mini golf course. So, yeah. What the world? <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> And y'all just discovered this guy, like, hey, yeah, you? yeah, yeah. They, I mean, it was a family that had gone, done mini golf there a bunch of times and um, in yeah. a very gentle, polite way, noticed that it was, you know, being run down, but also that the guy just didn't have a lot of help. And so they said, hey, what can I do? And they raised like a couple thousand dollars to just, to just make it happen. It's like, this is the beauty of empowerment like this is the beauty of what you were saying like people saying god has planted this inside of me and we are like you can do it and you can also trust god to provide like people you know finding ways to find the funds to find the people and sometimes other people that serve with them they don't even exactly love the outreach but they love the leader they love the person that they're serving with and so they're going to join in too and maybe develop that heart as well so yeah I just like have so many jitters. I can't even put into words because it's so beautiful. And I talk to people, I've, I like wrote something one time where it was like this idea of serving under the covering of your local church. Like everyone has passion. Everyone has ideas. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, especially in this culture, it's like, oh, I don't need the church. I can do it on my own. Like, yeah. yes, you can, but the church should be known as the most freeing and permission giving and empowering type of place where people feel the safest and they feel the most confident and the most covering not as a restriction but as like a gift and support yeah. system and so to see that flourishing in you guys and just you could have never come up with these ideas by yourself and no look at how beautiful it's bringing your congregation it's like bob goff just showed up like, <laughs> no for real you though do it. it's just so exciting you just don't know what's about to happen and uh, it's outlandish and it's whimsical and it's oh i love it yeah so stinking fun there's a group that served a man on serve day um who had cancer helped around the house and just this past week, they texted me like, oh, Steph, by the way, we forgot to tell you, but we went and served him again. We helped him move. And I was just like, oh, oh you didn't put it on the serve app. That's OK. I just love that you're like, this is what we're going to do. You know, we're just going to serve. And so, yes, doing it with the covering of the church is like, I think, super important. Um, just, yeah, it's amazing. So yep. it does feel like it's just the beginning. And I'm I'm kicking myself for not digging into Servolution resources way sooner, um, but I am grateful for God's timing and for, you know, where, where we're at and where he's taking us. Oh, he is doing something super special with you guys. It's so evident and yeah, your heart is so pure. And I think that's why he's able to work the way he is because you're so surrendered and he trusts you. So that's really cool. Um, I do want to ask like, if you could give people advice who are maybe like new, I'm new in this role or maybe COVID threw them for a loop, kind of like you did maybe, um, what are some of just your like philosophies? Like this is the things I live by, breathe by, like always consistent across the board. This is how we, we believe this is how we, I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think there are a couple of things that maybe it's repeated, but just like that we want to be a culture that says yes, that um, we want to build, want to build a structure that it may not be perfect, but it doesn't have to fully depend on one person, doesn't have to fully depend even only on the church. Um, but yeah, I think the the one thing that I struggle with often is the balance between doing something in a holistic way, like wanting to find the root of the problem when it comes to serving, you know, like wanting to really um, dig deep with that, but also like, but God can lead you to the root of the problem when you just do something sometimes. Um, but I think partnerships in the community are so important. Um, we've just found like some of the people in our church were already serving at different organizations. And instead, and we just went to them and said, Hey, 
you need people to help you still, right? They're like, yeah. I'm like, well, let's put it on the serve app and get some people to go with you, you know, to go serve at this food pantry or whatever. Um, but yeah, just having a culture that, that really listens and encourages, um, and listens to the heart of the people I think is super important. Um, because, getting to play the cheerleader role. Like I know Tori, you're like my cheerleader. You get to be a cheerleader for me, but now I get to taste like a little bit of, I feel like what you might get to feel in cheering people on, like within the church um, and getting to see them really just, you know, go, go with what God has really shown them. Um, Yeah. And I, and I think I've also realized that outreach can look differently. Like, I, I think I thought outreach has to look a certain way. And that was one of the biggest things that I learned from, from you, from Serve Lucian, Serve Your City is like, outreach doesn't have to be put in, it can't be put into this box. You know, like I, when I first started, I wanted all of the right answers. I wanted the right structure. I wanted the right people, but it is like ever changing. And um, yeah, God's just faithful no matter what season we're in to bring the right people and, and to lead us to the right places. But so good. I know. How many conversations do we have? I was like, Stephanie, it's yes and no. It's both. <laughs> very gray. There's no black and white here. I don't know. <laughs> I wanted black and white. (laughs) But I must say, and I tell you all the time, you have such a beautiful heart for learning and like exploring and researching. And you're not afraid to like reach out to someone. I I don't know how many people you've talked to that I don't even know about. You're just like, (laughs) from you, what about this? You have great questions. Like, where does that, how do you have such a, oh, to learn in such humility. I'm shy as I'll get out. I'm like, I don't ask to talk to you. I'll just study your ways. I just, just don't, but you just have <laughs> a hunger and a curiosity. Like what drives that? What, how do you, how do you keep that, that momentum and that? Yeah. Uh, I think first of all, not, not for a false humility, but literally the grace of God, like that he could, that there are so many people that are in a role similar to me that, that he is speaking to, too, that he is giving ideas to, too. And I want to be a part of like making the whole body of Christ better just by learning from what he's already spoken and doing in other people. Um, I definitely still don't even feel like I've researched enough or that I'm reading enough or that I'm talking to enough people, but I think it's actually really encouraging and, and such a relief when I realized, oh, we're all just trying to do the best we can. Like we all don't have it all together, you know, like just this new beautiful structure that I I'm excited about. It's not perfect. You know, it's not, it's not probably going to stay forever, but it's just really encouraging to, to have people cheering you on saying like, wait a second. Like, I really love that. I really, can I steal that? You know, we love to share like within the outreach community, like you can have this handbook and you can have this. Um, but it's just not worth doing it alone. Like I, I know I would be, I would be missing out trying to do this on my own. Um, so yeah, I'm sure part of it is just that grit of like, all right, there was no, not that God can't use people that don't have a formal education because thank God he, he is using us, but like, there's just this part of me that's like, I'm going to figure it out and God's going to lead me to the right people. Like he already has and has proven to. And so we're just going to keep going after that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You're so fun. Oh my gosh. I want to ask what is like a favorite testimony or story that you've experienced through your outreach? Yeah. Oh gosh. There are so many. So this just happened yesterday. Um, so just yesterday, uh, we have started what we call one of our outreach small groups where it's just like an after school program. Once a week, we go to a community center um, and we do activities with the kids and we just give them a space to, to do homework. And so the point is to build relationships with the kids, right? And to provide this safe space where they can come and grow. And there, um, we've been faithful to do it. There've been kids coming, but there's this one particular um, kid who has joined us who you can tell is just hard towards life. You know, he's, um, he's discouraged, but also trying to make up for it in a sense of like being tough and being strong and I'm going to beat this person up. And so, um, 
he he has come probably two or three times in a row now and everyone is just like there's something special about this guy um but we have had this opportunity where after we do after we do our activity and the homework and the kids are kind of getting ready to leave we'll just read a talk about a book that we're reading together and pray and then the adults leave the adults that are leading it so the the kid yesterday has, he rides his bike there 15 minutes and he's been staying around and hanging out afterwards. And, um, we were praying together. I was asking people like, how can we be praying? What are some prayer requests? And this kid who has never talked about Jesus doesn't seem to care about church, um, was sitting with us. He decided to hang out and sit with us. And I said, is there anything we can be praying about? And he was like, yeah, I have something. And he was just like, I just want to, pray because those kids they're just bullying me and and I don't like it and I just want I just want them to be taken care of and and also my cousin is having a baby and so like there was just a moment of like oh my gosh we're gonna like this is amazing we get to pray with him and so we just got to pray for that and there's just people that that continually show up and we get to have those moments with them just by being consistent and so yeah Oh my gosh, my heart. I found this one meet this kid and give him a hug. It's so cool. I know. Those moments, I talk with people a lot and it's like, you can put down all the big wins of outreach. Like we made mm-hmm. this kind of impact, whatever. But to me, the, like you said, the consistency, when you have consistent serves, you are able to pick up on those subtle wins yeah. and realize like that was a mountain that just moved. Like yeah. you get, I would look at that little prayer request and be like, whatever. But the consistency allows you to be like so much more aware of how the Holy Spirit's moving and his yeah. work in people's lives. And so that is pure gold just to yeah. be able to walk with people like that. And wow, it's yeah. really, really special. For sure. Oh, it really wow. is. It's a great story. Man. Okay. You have shared some amazing stuff. I think you've probably hyped everyone up with your Enneagram seven. <laughs> I love it. I had you pegged wrong. I know. I told did. You, like she's a five. She's a research. I got to know what's up. Nope. Seven makes sense. <laughs> That's what you get for Enneagram stereotyping. People. That's right. You're not supposed to do it, but we all do it. Don't we? <laughs> so fun. It, it's so fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. One more question. If you had to recommend something, book, podcast, sermon, what would you recommend to our listeners? So I, uh, my pastor shared this on Monday and it's been, or sorry, last Monday, it's been in my head ever since. And it's the scripture because, you know, uh, and it's Matthew nine. And it says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into the fields. And I think I've just been in this space where I'm like, okay, Jesus cares about the harvest more than I do, more than we do, right? He had such compassion for what is in front of them, for the people in our community. Um, And he just tells us to pray. Like when, when, I'm convicted, but also excited because I'm just like, okay, I can pray. Like I can develop people. I can do my best. But at the end of the day, the most important thing that I need to do is say, God, like send the workers, send the people with these passions, send the people that have, can go after these needs. Like we trust you with their obedience to cover it, you know? Uh, And so I think that's just where I'm at is like, it can feel post covid people may be being slow to volunteer for stuff, but we can just say, God, we're going to trust you with the harvest and that it's great and that you, you have compassion and we want to see you be Lord of the harvest. Wow, Steph, that's, that's profound. It's like simple, but so profound. And sometimes I think that prayer can be kind of an intimidating prayer. It's like, well, if, if he sins, I'm like, what am I yeah. going to do? Um, yeah. that's the beauty of like the work that you've put in, you have, such a confidence now in like how God works, mm. how God sends you people, how, what your system is of like, heck yes, go do it. Like yeah. that is so cool to me. So that is an audacious prayer to ask God to send people, mm. but he's letting you activate them and cheer them on. And that's all, that, that's his plan. So that's a beautiful answer. I love that. Um, how can people find you in the church, social media or yeah. 
The church website is summitpa.church or Instagram, Facebook, Summit PA Church. Um, then I'm just Steph A. McCoy, but don't don't do a PH or you'll never find me. I'm Steph with an F over here. <laughs> Steph with an F. We will remember. That's the name of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, any anything else that we did not cover that you'd like to make sure people know? Mm, just trust God with the process. For so long, I tried to figure out exactly how it has to look and felt so bad about I'm saying no, but I feel like when we really seek him, like we've talked about with full surrender, like he was faithful. He didn't lay out this whole plan like immediately. It was like with every step, it was like, well, maybe it could be with groups and maybe we could empower people this way. And, and so talk to people in your sphere and just be faithful to trust him. He's going to show every step. So good. So <laughs> good. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. Thank for you. Us. And just thank you for shining. I think so many people listening are already like falling in love with your heart and we're looking up to you so thank you for for leading the way thanks tori thanks for being a great cheerleader (laughs) bye listeners thanks for jumping on today we'll see you next time